hey guys uh, welcome back to my youtube channel and in this video i will show you how i repaired this sg3525 based dc to dc converter well since this converter was already broken i got it for very cheap from my local hardware store over here you can see the sg3525 ic which is used for the pwm control of the mosfets and eventually drive the pulse transformer so without any further ado let's get started in the repairing process of the circuit and well as you can see that the PCB traces are broken in some places. My first instinct was to repair those broken PCB traces and then figure out to investigate whether any other component was faulty or not. Since the circuit was not that complicated, it was easy for me to reverse engineer the PCB traces and come out with this schematic. Over here, you can see the SG3525 in PWM mode alternatively driving the two MOSFETs using the 10 ohm current limiting resistors. The frequency of this switching is determined by the RC timing components. In this circuit I found the capacitance value to be 1 nanofarad and the resistance value to be 22 kilo ohms. The 22 microfarad on pin 8 of the SG3525 is used for the soft start feature. The two MOSFETs alternatively push and pull current through the primary of the ferrite core transformer. This induces a high voltage in the secondary uh, which is rectified by the full bridge rectifier consisting of FR207 high frequency switching diodes. The rectified DC voltage is now smooth using a high voltage capacitor having capacitance 10 microfarad with a voltage rating of 400 volts. This is the ultimate output of the circuit. To make the circuit more reliable, a feedback system has been implemented using the resistor divider networks of 220 kilo ohms and 10 kilo ohms. This resistor divider network is then attached to the internal comparator of the SG3525 which controls the output voltage. Well, this circuit is simple and effective, but at the same time, I feel that it lacks certain features which are important, especially when making projects that involve high voltage. In one of my previous inverter videos, I had already made a high voltage design using the SG3525. The additional feature over here is the voltage feedback which enables us to control the output voltage. Over here you can see that instead of using a 10 kilo ohm static resistor, I have used a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer which enables me to control the final output voltage. It also features an LM393 op amp which is useful when powering the project using a battery so that under voltage protection can be enabled using this op amp. As soon as the battery reaches a certain threshold voltage which can be again set by a potentiometer, the shutdown feature of the IC activates and the output voltage is disabled. In this way, we can successfully prevent the battery from over discharging. Well, coming back to the SG3525 module. As you can see that I have used some solder to repair the broken PCB trace which I discussed earlier. I also desoldered the excess wire which was soldered previously on the module and properly soldered the input and the output wires. It was now time to test the output of the circuit and figure out whether the broken PCB trace was the only cause that the circuit did not work. To measure the output voltage, I used a multimeter in DC mode and connected its probes to the output of the circuit. Now to supply the input with the 12 volt, I used a small lithium ion battery pack which should be enough for the basic testing of this circuit. So I quickly hooked up the negative and the positive terminals of the battery to the input. But unfortunately as you can see I did not observe any output from the circuit. So the PCB trace does not seem to be the only problem. We need to investigate further to find out the root, root cause of the circuit not functioning properly.
Since the broken PCB trace was not the only problem, I went ahead and desoldered the two switching MOSFET of the circuits. In this module, the MOSFETs are the P55 NF06 N channel MOSFETs. These are pretty powerful MOSFETs considering their current rating and can easily handle significant amount of current. However, there's a good chance of them blowing up which results in no switching happening on the pulse transformer and consequently no output voltage. Now to test whether both the MOSFETs are working fine or not, I got myself this component tester which is a smart little tool which can easily help us to identify broken electronic components and also gives information about certain specification of the same. Over here, you can see I have plugged in the MOSFET into the ZIF socket and I'll switch on the module to evaluate the parameters of the MOSFET. After switching on the component tester, we can see that the tester successfully identifies the component as an N-channel MOSFET. This concludes that one of the MOSFETs is fine and did not blow up. Now testing the second MOSFET in the similar way. And as you can see that the component tester has successfully identified the second component as an N-channel MOSFET. So in conclusion we can say that both the MOSFETs of the circuit are working fine. On checking the circuit of the module, I found out that the power to the SG3525 module was delivered through two current limiting resistors, a 0.25 watt followed by a 1 watt resistor. I wanted to make sure that the SG3525 is getting adequate power to turn on and enable the PWM outputs. So I connected my 12 volt lithium ion battery pack and grabbed my multimeter to check whether the SG3525 is getting powered on. And well, as you can see that the capacitor bank is getting the supply voltage. That means that the connections to the VCC and the capacitor is fine. Now let's check the connection from the capacitor bank to the VCC pin of the SG3525. And as you can see that instead of getting the VCC voltage, we are getting a pretty low voltage of 0.39 volts. This small voltage is definitely not enough to power on the SG3525. So we can conclude that there is some possibility of fault in between the power supply from the wires to the SG3525. So to further investigate the fault, I turned my multimeter into continuity mode. I wanted to check whether the current limiting resistors were working fine or not. So I disconnected my lithium ion battery pack for the time being and went ahead to check the continuity and value of the resistors. First, I went ahead and checked whether one terminal of the resistor was properly connected to the VCC of the SG3525, which it was. You can also see the 330 ohm value of the resistor, meaning that the 1 watt resistor was working fine. It was now time to test the 0.25 watt resistor. One terminal of the 0.25 watt resistor successfully connects to the SG3525 VCC. But well, here you can see that there is definitely some connectivity issue from the second terminal of the 0.25 watt resistor and the VCC of the IC. In conclusion, I came to know that the 0.25 watt resistor was the fault in the circuit.
Well, just for testing purpose, I took two jumper wires and directly shorted the two current limiting resistors. In essence, we have now a direct link between the VCC wires and the supply pin of the SG3525. Since the value of the resistor were not too high, it was safe to short out both the resistors just for the sake of testing, which I would definitely later replace with an equivalent one. With this modification to the circuit, it was now time to set up my multimeter and connect it to the output of the module and connect the 12 volt power supply and finally check whether we have a suitable output or not. And as you can see, we now have a high voltage DC at the output of the module just as we expected. I may have interchanged the connections of the output wires to the multimeter probes which results in the negative sign, but that is okay. I now connected an AC socket to which I will later attach a charger and check whether this module is capable of powering the charger and eventually charging the phone. And this time I will be using a comparatively bigger battery and make the necessary connections from the battery to the module. And yes, as you can see that the phone starts to charge up with the charger which is eventually connected to the DC-DC converter. These chargers are basically switch mode chargers and can work on higher level DC. And with that, a small but interesting repair of the DC to DC converter comes to an end. I would also like to show you my 12V to 220V inverter which I made using the similar IC SG3525 along with LM358 to implement other protection features which I discussed earlier. Here you can see that my project is divided into two parts. The first part converts the low voltage DC to a high voltage and the second part converts the high voltage DC into 50Hz AC using the age bridge configuration. I hope you like this video. Feel free to share your remarks and feedback in the comment section. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.